PvP in Destiny is a weird place to have fun at times if you ask any players on their opinions of it. They either tell you they absolutely despise it, love it, or hate it, it's never in between. And a lot of that is mainly due to the meta that rolls around it every now and then. So how do we go about fixing such an issue? Well, you create a fun build that will keep you entertained and offer you something non-meta worthy to play with until something new and broken comes along. So I present you a very familiar build that most of you here may have already seen, the Titan one-shot sticky grenade build. A fun and very interesting build to play around with in PvP that utilises the Void Sticky Grenades and Oppressive Darkness mod to make our grenades a lot more useful than they ever have been before, by making them capable of one-shotting anyone it sticks. A simple and straight to the point build that has its pros and cons and has a slight learning curve to it, but of course I'll be sure to guide you around it. So like always, if you have any builds or things you would like me to cover, then by all means please do leave a comment in the comment section and I'll be sure to have a look at it after and see what I can make of it. So starting off with the subclass, we will be using Code the Commander subclass to gain ability energy back, but mainly optimise the perk Control Demolition. Now the idea of the build is to use both the Magnetic Grenade and the Impressive Darkness mod to craft a one-shot Sticky Nade that will hopefully net you a kill, but this won't always be the case for a number of reasons, with the biggest reason being Oppressive Darkness not actually kicking in all the times. This small but very annoying vulnerability can lead to some 1v1 encounters with the enemy player surviving from the grenade and then killing you straight after with no reward for you to reap. This is where the controlled demolitions perk comes in. This perk will attach a small void detonator from one of your void melees or grenade hits and upon it being damaged will detonate and either outright kill the opposing player or weaken them to be easily taken out from other sources. This and the resupply perk that gives you and your allies health, melee and grenade energy back upon void detonator kills will make the chance of you sticking your grenades more consistent and rewarding in the meme run. Plus, even if you miss the grenade, as long as the grenade detonates near a player, you have a chance of it procking the void detonator ability on them, and overall marking them for death if enough hits lands on them. Now, Code of the Aggressor is an alternative choice to pick as that subclass can reward you both grenade energy upon grenade kills, super energy upon kills while being surrounded, and the ability to disorientate slash one-shot kill with the use of shield bash. Although strong, your grenades may not net a kill at times because of the above reasoning, and if those reasoning occurs quite a bit, you will find yourself quite frustrated in using the subclass successfully. Now for grenades, is a bit of an obvious one here, but magnetic grenades are the one and only thing you need for your arsenal, nothing else matters. Only the magnetic grenade should be in your loadout. For the weapons, you want to utilise the Demolitionist perk and any ability regenerating perks that can give you an edge on the field. How you go about this will depend on what your personal playstyle is, but you'll definitely want to have what I'm using, ideally, if you want to make the whole build useful and play in your favour. For the primary side of things, the Traveller's Chosen Sidearm will be my main pick for countering players in close quarter fights and making use of its specialised perk that can give us ability energy upon kills with it. Like in my past video, I mentioned that if you have this weapon and plan to use this weapon a lot within your loadout, that you don't need to fully spec out your melee, grenades or class speciality, as this can be easily covered by the exotics traits. Now it's a great all round weapon to use that hits hard, has good stability, and aim assist is great to use for countering shotgun players who like to ape a lot, or to use to stand your ground when you can't use your primary anymore. It's definitely a great weapon to have in a crucible as a backup. Another thing to be aware of is that if you get a kill with the weapon, instead of getting one gathering light for your perk, you actually get three instead, which honestly didn't need to be added, but compared to the PvE version, nonetheless, is a welcoming condition that can help with making the build even more lethal on the go. For secondary, we have the infamous Norn Hunger with Demolitionist and Field Prep. Now, when it comes down to ease of use, the Norn Hunger for this season has come out on top, and everyone from noob to veteran can get this weapon easily from the recaster near Drifter by focusing precisely onto it. So you can stay a part of the ongoing meta without the hassle. My use of the weapon revolves around the demolitious perks that can get my grenades back freely, and when combined with the Traveller's Chosen, I can create a consistent rotation of ability being fully restocked as long as I don't die too much. The role I have here is suitable for PvP as it doesn't need a lot of perks to improve on its range or stability, but that shouldn't stop you from doing so anyways if you get a chance. Alternatively, weapons like the Art Logic and Reckless Oracle are also great high rate of fire ARs that can roll with the Demolitions perk that may be of your choosing instead and also fits well with the PvP meta so you won't be left behind. 
You may also find a perk that is common on one weapon and not on the other, such as the Art Logic being able to roll Overflow and move a target, which Normal Hunger can't roll, or Mudigam that only the Reckless Oracle can roll, but is handy for Spray and Pray. And lastly, Heavy, I've gone with the Interference Grenade Launcher with full Quart, Crown Cartridge and High Explosive Ordnance. The role I have isn't suitable for PvP at all, and many of you here will already know that the role is much more suitable for PvE against mini bosses to big bosses. Well, slightly, I guess. I don't plan on using my heavy in most of the matches unless I get a chance to, as it's too risky to pick it up and then lose it and then give it away to the enemy team. If I'm lucky, maybe my teammate will pick it up, but that's 50 50. If you feel comfortable in this area, then pick whatever will net you the most kills, but if you don't care, then don't worry so much about this area. Just make sure you have the primary and secondary as shown here. For stats, I've primarily focused on improving my recovery and discipline stats, as these will be the most active areas in PvP. I've left my resilience at around the 50 to 60 area, as that's what my total armor will be able to provide. But that should be enough for surviving certain lethal hits. Our recovery now is at 80 for a 29% recovery rate, and this stat can help with getting in and out of danger by allowing you to regen your health at a much faster speed. As this is PvP, this may well be the case where you need to take on a player who have taken cover but is recovering or if you need to escape back to your teammates for help. The higher the stat is, the longer you'll be able to stay alive on the field and that is the basic 101 to survive in the Crucible. The Discipline stat has been allocated to 70 for a 45 second cooldown and this can be played around with depending on how much you actually need if you plan to use your primary and secondary a lot. Now I want to make the full use of my discipline for the sticky one shots and place it around the 70 section is a much better spot than I've recommended. It's not too much but it's not too little either and with everything working together this should work out fine for yourself. Of course this does leave your mobility and strength and intelligence stat to their own accord so perhaps reduce it down to the 50 section so you can spread your stats out equally if you have the slot to do so. Next for the armor, you will need this season and last season's armor pieces for the mixture of mods we are going for and they will all need to be solo affinity pieces for the charge with light mods and AR enhancing mods. If you have the season pass, the armor provided are the best ones to work with as they come with high stats and 6 free armor slots for you to work with. For exotics, we will be using the armamentarian chest for double grenades which sounds like luster for an exotic but makes grenade builds like ours a lot more lethal in the right scenarios. Now here are the mods we will be using for the whole segment of the build. Head, Recovery, Enhanced Scatter Projectile Targeting and Auto Rifle Targeting mod. Arm, Recovery, Fastball, Auto Rifle Loader and Taking Charge mod. Chest, Recovery and Overload Grenades mod. A leg, Mobility, Auto Rifle Dexterity and High Energy Fire mod. Mark, Concussive Dampener, Oppressive Darkness and Bomber mod. This build is one that many users may have already seen be done since Oppressive Darkness was first introduced, with different variations being shown. It has its pros plus cons with its usage in PvP, but seems to be varying at times depending on the map and players you face, and there is a slight learning curve when it comes down to landing your grenades and getting a definite kill with them, but it's all part of learning the ins and outs of all builds. So for those that aren't familiar with build, the build focuses heavily on the magnetic void grenades, sticking them and then getting a one shot kill with them with the use of a Press of Darkness mod. Now the magnetic grenades on its own won't allow you to net a one shot kill with it as the amount of damage you do isn't enough which is around 75 times 2 per the two explosions. The only way to get a sticky kill consistently is to either use the Heart of Inmost Light exotic chest piece for ability buffs or the Press of Darkness mod. Now upon adding the Press of Darkness mod your damage gets changed from 75 to 98 which overall will net you enough damage to one shot anyone it sticks to. This new damage now will be enough for you to one shot but this can only come true if a yellow number 2 sign pops up. If this sign appears then the Press of Darkness mod has activated and you have a guaranteed kill. If not then the user will be injured but not killed depending on how much health they have. Now of course as backup I'm using the middle tree void subclass to attach void detonators which will help with doing extra damage to those who are stuck or those in the surrounding area and it works a charm considering that a sticky grenade may not always detonate and kill. Now add in a few mods to aid in your weapons usage and versatility on the field and you now have a one of a kind one shot build to use and mess around with in pvp, specifically the non-competitive pvp. 
Now don't take this build too serious as this build won't allow you to pub stomp players each match or make you some kind of PvP god overnight. It's more of a have fun type of build as you watch your sticky connect and watch everyone panic until it detonates. And the feeling of landing a grenade and seeing the number 2 sign pops up gives off an amazing feel knowing that their fate has been sealed. But let's talk about the downside of the build as not a lot of people talk about this area. The magnetic grenades although strong has a few issues that can make it very inconsistently. One being the mobile players who can dodge or slightly move away from it and the other being the press of darkness mod not always activating. Now for the mobile players part, this is aimed at everyone but specifically the hunters who can instantly dodge and make the grenade fall off which is very annoying at times. The magnetic grenade aim assist only kicks in once it's very close to the player, at least touching the player. And you can see it happen many, many times. The problem with this though is that it's not very strong and players who are moving very quickly on the ground or in the air can easily whiff past it. Now, depending on the map you play, this can severely weaken the build in general, making it a lot more harder to use the build to its fullest. So you ideally want to aim for smaller, more clustered type maps. The secondly is the mod, a press of darkness not always kicking in. And this is something you'll see 50% of the times and it's unknown why this happens. Like I mentioned before, if you see a yellow number 2 sign appear then you know the kill is guaranteed but if not, then they may make an escape if they survive. This can be easily countered by using the mid tree to attack void detonators as a failsafe if things don't go the way as planned. This is the best and safest route you should take if you wish to net more kills consistently. So overall the build is wonderful to play with if you like to try and challenge yourself by using sticky grenades more since they are highly underused grenades in game. The build would do wonders in close knitted maps and on control game mode. But against mobile players and this weak stickiness you may get a few issues here and there. But generally that's all part of learning how the build works and making it work within your favour. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub. And also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you do that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you all in the next one.